Well, today is the day. It's going to be our final day of combine and corn for 2021. There's about 60 acres on this farm. We did about 15 or so of it last night. And we're getting ready to get started here. I have started up both the combine and the grain buggy tractor. Just let them warm up for a hot minute here and then we'll get started. Sarah's gonna bring over another truck and my father is on his way over with one too. And my brother is just leaving the farm now. With a load of corn on the tractor trailer and um, Alex was just leaving as well. Now we don't have the tarp on the combine. I took that off so that I could get the combine in the shop to work on it there. Looks like I got a tree branch stuck in the uh, hopper extension. And um, I do have a fair amount of corn on top of the cab. I don't think I can get anything more on there than what's on there. So we're just going to leave that there without the tarp on the combine it is uh, spilling over a little bit I've got to get my uh, full bin buzzer sensor working um, it must be stuck or hung up uh, being that I had the bin extensions folded down so we might as well get started here in 2019 I think it was 2019 we ended up chopping the corn on this farm in the snow. It was somewhat of a day like today where it was gray and gloomy and about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning it started snowing and we ended up finishing this with like three inches of snow on the ground. So I don't think we're going to get any snow today. The ground is stiffened up pretty good. It allows us to hopefully continue to load the trucks in the field we loaded the tractor trailer alongside the road there there's that driveway's like it's a big 60 feet wide there so um let's get after it here so we'll check in with sarah here hey uh you kind of missed the intro you were switching trucks and i was explaining to everybody that today is going to be our last day do you have any thoughts of today being the last day and all um one thing i didn't explain to them we almost lost the uh top uh cover extension there that was all loose here the other day we had to bolt that down that thing was shaking back and forth and with a little bit of luck today we ought to be able to get through the day without any problems we've had a fair amount of problems with the combine however we have not had any problems with this grain buggy so we're hoping to keep it that way uh, yes we had to bolt that cover down the other day but however um, we haven't had any issues with the auger or the drive line or any tires or anything like that so hopefully you can keep it from uh, breaking down today, right? Because uh, the combine's had enough breakdowns. That's not going to break down again. I better get to the combine because I am almost empty. So, well, we're going to keep at it. All right. Watch out for the power poles and the wet holes. Yeah. All right. As you can see, it's a little wet back here, but it's also a little crunchy. And I better hurry up and get up into this combine because we are empty. of daylight 
and um, I figured I would throw the drone up in the air. And we have flown the drone from this field while we have harvested it before. However, when we did, we were chopping corn in here. And we were chopping corn in the snow. Now, um, what you can kind of see here, we're unloading on the go. And um, you can see there's actually corn in the bin on the combine here. We don't have the tarp on the bin uh, because I had to combine in the shop and we only had two days worth of combine and left to do. And I figured that there isn't any sense of putting the tarp on to just take it back off again. So you can also see that I have some cab corn corn that is up on top of the cab and that is oh we're coming out of the road because we're in the mud and I need to make sure that I don't spill any corn out of the grain bin or out of the uh, grain buggy here so I gotta back the drone up Sarah's trying to keep herself synchronized usually we have her run at one speed and I try to match the speed of the grain buggy, but being that I'm flying the drone, uh, she realizes that I am not too all capable of running the speed stick here. And being that we're going downhill, I gotta fluctuate my speed here quite a bit. So like I was saying, I'm uh, dealing with a little bit of uh, corn on top of the cab here. Um, it's just one of them things, I am not used to it. Uh, because since we had the uh, tarp on the bin here, um, that kind of keeps the corn in place. So I am, of course, empty. So I'll turn the grain of boat off. She's watching to make sure the corn stops. And she's going to proceed on through and out to uh, the side of the road here where we are loading trucks. Now, um, you can see we're on a little bit of a hill here, and to be honest with you, that's where some of the cab corn has come from here, just from descending down this hill, and um, having the corn creep over the top of the uh, hopper extension. So, back in 2019, uh, when we chopped the corn on this farm, it was a day very similar to this one here. It was gray and gloomy. And about 11 o'clock in the morning, a couple hours after we had started, it started to snow. And we chopped this field that I'm on here now. And the one that's on the north end of it here, it's only like three or four acres. Uh, we chopped those in the, the these fields in the snow. Now we'll go ahead and follow Sarah out through the uh, field entrance here. And she is going out to the side of the road and she's going to uh, dump on the uh, tractor trailer. We can actually just kind of turn this drone around, pan it around this way. You can see how slow I'm going because I am trying to stay on the road fly the drone at the same time so at any rate um, she's having to drive a good distance to uh, get to the trucks on the side of the road now um, back in 2019 I was chopping the field next to this one which is just on the other side of the hedgerow uh, let me pan back around the other way field on just the other side of this hedgerow here, this long narrow strip. I was just, wow, there's power lines going across this field. I was right down in about where the power lines were, or are. And I heard some commotion out by the road. Tim was having trouble getting out of the field with the Aulic trailer. And we'll fly out to the side of the road here 
while I'm combining along here and we'll kind of give you a little bit of a story as to what was going on. He ended up getting stuck and we had to pull the, the, the road tractor and the trailer out of the field with the dump wagon. Um, I was hearing the commotion on the radio, you know, as they were getting things hooked up and getting them going. I called the guy that was trying to pull the, uh, do the pulling with the tractor and I said, you know, once he gets, once that road tractor hits the road, just let him go. Just let him uh, take it from there. And uh, oh, Alex is back here. And he can uh, position himself because he's going to have to make a different approach than what you're going to give him. And I've got aircraft disconnected. Now we're back connected again. So, um, long story short, the trailer ended up going in the ditch here. And, um, We'll show you what kind of a driveway we've got here now. We've got a wide driveway. Uh, the Olek trailer is hooked to the Peterbilt. The Brothers uh, 567 model Peterbilt. I called it a 367 when I did the uh, drive around with it or the uh, when I made my trip, the, the maiden voyage, if you will, with the video camera to the field there. I called it a 367. But it's a, a uh, get that right, 567, I believe. So right in front of the uh, road tractor is where the uh, all the trailer ended up going in the ditch because the uh, uh, the guy pulling Tim uh, didn't stop and he didn't have enough swing on the driveway to get out onto the road and. He grabbed on to the, Tim grabbed on to the brakes, and when he did, he uh, got dragged a little ways, and once the trailer went into the ditch, it ended up breaking the chain. So I've got a roll plugged up here, so i got to let the head slow down. And um, it got caught in the ditch there. Uh, there was a small shrub right by that power pole there. Um, it was leaning up against the shrub. I came out to the side of the road here, and uh, the neighbor that lives over on the back road, he was up on Young Road, which is right up there at the intersection, and he uh, blocked traffic. I came out onto the road, hooked onto the side of the trailer, and um, I pulled it in the direction that it was going to be going to get it out of the ditch. And it walked right up out of there, and uh, Tim went back to the farm, unloaded uh, the load, and then he jumped in a straight truck just because it was too uh, greasy to get around with the road tractor. He only had road tires on, and um, being that it was starting to snow, uh, it, it just wasn't going to happen. So uh, the rest of that day, we ended up back in the trucks into the driveway and um, loading them all with the dump wagons. So as you can see right here now, there is a big driveway here. That was the first year we had rented this farm and it was just a little tiny 20 foot wide driveway and um, it is now like 60 feet uh, wide there right now. Uh, last year we chopped the corn in this field that we're over the top of with the drone. I was cutting my way around the outside here and I got over just on the other side of this fence and um, I glanced over my right hand shoulder, I was going counterclockwise and I seen that there was a blue tarp on the uh, little greenhouse things that are on the end of this shed here. I seen the tarp was in not, well, it wasn't in the greatest of condition, so I started to think, oh, what the heck? You know, that tarp probably half it's out in the field. So I looked again, and I seen some exotic plants growing um, on the end of this shed here. So um, that's the story behind that. So we'll go ahead and get flown back over to uh, the field that I am in here, or I'm going to end up losing connection with the drone. It's getting a little wonky here right now because I've got quite a few trees 
in between me and the drone and I've got to get flown back to uh, the field here. As you can see, it's kind of gray and gloomy and um, it's been spitting a little bit of snow and I actually have to get up off the ground here a little bit higher or else um, I'm going to run into a problem where the uh, drone is not going to uh, be connected to the uh, remote here anymore. So I'm just jogging up across this headland here. And uh, I've got the headland done on this one end and I'm just going to start up across this field on these straight rows here so we can uh, continue out this uh, video here. So the last time I put the drone up in the air when um, we were combining corn it was, uh, uh, it was like 10 days ago. It was actually opening day of shotgun season here. And um, if you recall, we were spying on the neighbor. And um, there was that deer that had been injured. Um, that I almost ran over with a combine. And then we uh, flew over to where he was resting uh, on, in, uh, on the side of the field. Um, next to the hedgerow. I didn't, uh, I didn't have, uh, by the time I finished that video, I didn't end up um, telling you what actually happened to that deer. I thought it got hit by a car. Um, I didn't really exactly know uh, what happened to it. I'm struggling to get up through this mud here, so um, I gotta kinda make sure I stay on the road. Well, at any rate, um, I talked about it in the live stream here last night, and uh, some of you have uh, probably already know this story, but at any rate, uh, that land there, we rent, um, we rent that parcel of land, and I, and I happened to talk to the landlord, and I said, you know, hey, if you've got anybody that's hunting this ground, uh, could you see if they can come over and shoot this deer? He said, I'll get a hold of so-and-so and maybe they can track it down. Well, he never came around to uh, come over and shoot that deer. I can't make it any farther. If I had to chop her, it would walk right up through here and it wouldn't have any problems. These freaking combines are a dog when it comes to the uh, hydraulic power to the uh, wheels here. Uh, the back wheels will be spinning faster than the front ones and um, this wet hole ain't that big that's why I'm just gonna push it I'm up through it now oh I turned the drone too much I'm sorry so at any rate um, no one came along that night to do anything with that deer uh, the following morning when I started in combining I seen that the deer was still there and still alive I I thought sure that the, the uh, coyotes would have got it. Um, when I left the field that night in the dark, I couldn't see it. I thought it maybe crawled into the hedgerow and, um, you know, whatever. So the next morning, I ended up uh, going past where he was and he's still there. So I got a hold of Sarge. Uh, he works for us. I said, hey, um, I don't know if you're interested in this deer. I don't know what what quality the meat is going to be because I don't know what's wrong with it um, but here's the situation I almost ran it over and I told him the whole story and he said I'll, I'll come over and take a peek so he came over he was uh, concerned about it as far as you know is there something wrong with it you know what is wrong with it and if I shoot it I don't if the meat's no good I don't want to waste my tag so he got a hold of the DEC and the DEC wanted to come take a peek at it as well. They didn't want him to shoot it because they wanted it alive. And um, in the meantime, while he was waiting for them to show up, he got a hold of his buddy that rents some land near uh, where the deer was. And his buddy says, hey, yeah, you know what? Last night, I ended up uh, injuring that. I shot that deer with a bow, and he says, uh, I think I nicked his spine, and it might have paralyzed him, but they tracked him until it got dark, and then he, he lost track of it. 
and uh, Sarge ended up shooting it and then his buddy came and uh, picked up the deer uh, just a short time after that. So that's the story uh, behind that uh, deer there. And the one uh, advantage that you guys have with the tarp off in there, you can actually see corn going into uh, the bin on the combine. And as you can see, not only have I uh, got cab corn, but I've got engine compartment corn as well. So uh, the, the little uh, bin indicator, new hickey, is right on the left hand side of this front panel. And it doesn't always alert me as to um, the bin being full or not. If I turn, nah, coming off the row, slipping and sliding in the mud here. Yeah, yeah, I can walk back over and get on the row here. Yeah, as you can see, let me get this thrown up in the air a little bit here so we can see what I'm fighting. Um, yeah, there we go. We're back on the row. And, uh, yeah. So we're just going to keep on motoring along here. Um, it is just shy of 3 o'clock right now and I'm assuming we're going to be able to get this done here uh, tonight. we got another five hours left of the day here. However, it is going to be dark. Um, it is going to be dark here in about an hour and a half. So uh, this is where we're going to shut down with the drone. I've just got an alert on the um, controller slash uh, phone that I use to control the drone with. That the uh, battery is getting low on the drone. I'm down to 37% and I better get it flown back to uh, the combine here. I, I had the opportunity to put the drone up in the air because it takes the green buggy a little while to get to the road and back again. And uh, I better get this drone flown back to the combine before Sarah gets up here, she'll kick my butt because um, she's not going to want to be waiting. And I'm having trouble every once in a while with that sixth row. I get a little uh, small ear of corn caught in it because I'm on and off the row here. And uh, it is. Well, it is just starting to uh, clean itself out there. So we're going to go ahead and get the drone flown back to the combine before it lands. And once it lands itself, um, I have to go and retrieve it. So if I can fly this drone back, I, don't, I can't land it on the cab. I've got too much corn uh, on top of the cab. So you can kind of see the... Uh, mess that we have going on here and uh, <laughs> for the most part some of this corn has fallen off of the cab but we'll go ahead and and uh, land on the uh, cab anyway Well, I gotta tell you, <laughs> this video that we have just made, or I have just made, yes. sucks extremely. Yeah. I have just landed the drone okay. a little while ago. <laughs> Terrible. All right. Um, being that this is the last day of combining corn, and everybody is here for the thumbnail. Um, what I'm going to ask Sarah to do is to come up with something, something exciting. But um, I do have a confession. I do have a confession to make, and that is we have just clickbaited you. Um, the picture and the thumbnail of the grain buggy, I actually took a, uh, it's not even a screenshot. I took a picture of um, a uh, 
like that was that was a great day or something like that in the back of the farm journal magazine once a month they have a farm f up farm screw up and there was this green i don't even know what kind it was i don't know if it was a brent or if it was an underfirth or what but it was a grain buggy flipped over you guys seen the thumbnail it's a terrible thumbnail um and i feel really bad because all of you have come into the video here and um they click baited them uh kind of by them so I was going to ask Alec or ask Sarah if she could kind of um, create some excitement here, but um, it doesn't look like you're going to get that. So uh, we got through combining corn for 2021, and we have combined corn for 32 days. Not 32 days straight, it's been 32 days of combining corn. You know how many days we spent chopping? 34. 34. I spent 34 days in the chopper and 32 days in the, uh, you know, combine. So we did this all without the help from Yankum Ropes. Uh, we didn't get to start this video out with the way the day started out today. Sarah brought fuel over for the combine. I didn't get over here in time and she brought fuel over with the Ford pickup truck today. We didn't have the use of the Chevy. Nope. So the first time we filled the combine with the Ford. And really? good thing the ground was froze. It was able to scoot into the field mm -hmm. easily mm -hmm. without having to trounce through any kind of mud. And um, so we have filled the combine with... Uh, you know transfer tanks on the back of pickup trucks so we haven't had the use of yankum ropes uh we haven't had the use of uh what is that thunder thunder creek fuel trailers we tried to get uh them to come to the table here and the other thing that we did not have the ability to take advantage of was the use of a grain buggy wouldn't that have been fun to use like a four million bushel grain buggy? Now this, we got a 7290 on a 500 bushel grain cart. How big of a grain cart do you think you could handle with this tractor? Not any bigger. Maybe a 510? Yeah, maybe. Maybe a 510. Mm -hmm. Not because we have bald tires, but because we are in conditions like this uh if you can tell we're on we've got a little bit of a grade right there and a little steeper of a grade right here and uh i don't think we could get away with a 1500 or an 1800 or a four million hundred uh 30 bazillion hundred uh grain buggy we would obviously have to have a bigger tractor on it but um, we have made this little cute, cute little grain buggy uh, work and it has done exceptionally well. And the uh, combine is in the unloading process and it is just delivering kernels of corn out through the auger. And what I need to do is I need to close out this video. What we need to do is we need to thank all of you for uh, participating along with the uh, the harvest the harvest of 2021 it's been so drastic this year yeah. but we started corn when we started chopping we started on september 13th and we're not getting done till november 30th so however many days that is that's like that's like 900 days ain't it if you do the math right I, I, i'm not doing the math but um I was talking to my brother this morning and um, I said we need to because we are dairy farmers we need to milk this process and we really should milk it until the thir the 13th of December mm -hmm. and then that math would be easier that yeah. would be uh, like nine months yeah nine or is it three it's three three months <laughs> so yeah we would have been three months uh, doing corn so um, it is 
the reason why we're not doing corn or the reason why it took us so long to do corn it's not the size of the machine folks it's the amount of acres that gets done that's why we have been so long here it's uh and not really the uh acres it's the amount of tons and bushels right mm -hmm. how many grain buggy loads have you offloaded with this everybody should guess down in the uh the 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 comments the comment section uh there's one guy that that talk that says it's the uh s-h-i-t talker section which that's pretty funny um you'll have to guess how many grain buggy loads um she has taken to the truck this year it's roughly two and a half grain buggy loads per truck and we put on about four and a touch for the uh all like trailer so guess down below and i'll have a number for you here at some point in time once i add up all the uh loads that we have done so that is gonna do it folks uh thanks for watching and we'll catch it the next one do you have anything you want to say uh, bye folks bye folks yeah all right take it easy folks we'll see you we're gonna leave her alone thank you <laughs> yeah yeah your face is turning red now. Know, it wasn't red earlier. It's red now.